Hello, this time we'll talk about um, how to create a better splash screen. As you saw in the demo, I simplified this a lot by creating this splash screen by just getting a screenshot from the YouTube demo of the ratios application. As you can see, the scaling here doesn't look good on multiple resolutions. You just resize the screen and stretches. It's pretty awful. Uh, and usually you'd expect something more elaborate. Now it's true for a splash screen, but you can use these same rules to create any screen that resizes its background properly. And to do this, let's start by creating a brand new splash screen right here. Um, let's just call it uh, splash2 and just create this. Now we don't want this gradient because here, as you can see, they have the radial gradient and we want that more elaborate gradient. So let's start first by creating radial gradient style and I'll define the style right from here. Um, first I'll define the padding and the margin to be zero so it reaches the entire screen and then override the background to use a radial gradient. Now I'll type in the numbers that I got earlier from uh, this particular screenshot so it'll be as similar as possible to what they did there and these are the colors that they have there right this and they have a relatively large gradient so it's something more akin to this um, I'll move the center as you can see I'm moving the center of the gradient upwards and to uh, to the center more as I resized it appropriately. So this is it. This is the basic uh, gradient. Now I'm going to set the layout here to be border layout so I can add layers more easily. This is very akin to Photoshop layers. So if a designer creates the theme for you or you are a designer, then this is pretty much exactly how you'd create a layer in Photoshop. I'll just place another container in the center. And as you can see, it got placed in the center. And I'm going to change um, the uh, UI ID for it to a texture. And I'll just show you how this works by adding images. I'll add this image, the texture images. And as you can see, it's got lots of squares. There are essentially transparency squares. Uh, they're translucent uh, squares and completely transparent squares. And this gives a sort of a textured feel to this entire thing. So I'm going to create a new texture UI ID. Now this might not pass as well through the video because of the compression and everything. Uh, I'm going to tile this texture. As you can see, tiling is a very beautiful effect that we can use. And uh, that's how it will look if there was nothing underneath. But, ah, I forgot. I need to obviously set this to be transparent and I need to remove the padding and margin, otherwise it won't look good. And now I just reload this and I'm not sure if it's visible, but there's a really nice texture on top that makes the gradient uh, more, um, less refined and more rugged and it's, it's very attractive. Now I'm going to place another layer on top and in it I want to do two separate effects. Um, first I'd like uh, it to have uh, this area here and next I'd like it to have the logo. So I'll start first, uh, I'll start with the second actually because that's easier. I just use a border layout and here I use the absolute center feature, which means that any element I place in the center of this uh, container, I got into the wrong container here, um, I forgot to set this to be a border layout eventually, that's weird, oops, one eye, ah, I wanted this not to be the absolute center, and now this should be in the center and the layout in here. Yeah, that, that's what I wanted. Um, for some reason, did I not update the texture UI ID? 
should be fine. Now the label here, I'll just uh, place the logo here instead. So I'll just remove the text and I'll add an image of the logo, which is, this is it. I just wrote it myself in uh, Photoshop. In GIMP actually, technically, if we're uh, that inclined, I personally prefer it. Um, and that's the logo. Now, we want to add that effect with uh, these tools on top. So to do this, I'll, I'll need to change the, uh, the style here to be um, tools. And I made a special effect here for this. Uh, I'll customize the tool style and I'll play, use a tile horizontal align top which essentially means uh, the image is tiled like this. And I'll pick a special uh, spoon uh, animation. Sorry. This is what I wanted. And this should work. Like, ah, I need to obviously set it to be uh, no padding, no margin. No background transparency, like this, and this is what I want. Now, it might not be immediately obvious what I did here, but it will be obvious. Hmm? Ah, here we go. As you can see, the spoon here is moving, because we the image I used here for the spoons is a texture image. So, um, sorry, a timeline image. So it's really animated, and this way we can have a relatively powerful animation right here on top. And the splash screen generally can be customized to anything and will look good regardless of the resolution. I can reduce this like this, and it still looks good, reasonably good. Um, and obviously there's no scaling, nothing of that sort in this in place. It's all completely in runtime and it's actually reasonably efficient. Now next time around I'll talk about how uh, I did this particular animation that you see here. Uh, this is just a simple timeline animation as you can see these are the objects and I'll go over how I did that specifically and integrated it. Obviously my source material was limited because I used that same image capture and my limited uh, GIMP Photoshop <laughs> skills. But uh, I'll talk about this a bit more next time.